Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to have a bit of a discussion about something which was shown on the trailer for Total War Warhammer 3 that has raised a fair amount of questions. I'm of course referring to the letter that is shown on screen right now. The letter itself is not very visible, but has been making waves throughout the Total War Warhammer community. Interpretations have been taken in various ways, and I've tried to interpret it as much as I could. Of course, I've not been able to do this without help. I have a few issues being short-sighted, so a YouTuber known as Monsters Abound, a brilliant content creator whose link will be in the channel below, ended up transcribing the actual letter, or at least to the very best of his ability. And also I had some discussions with Colonel Damders, which will also be linked in the channel below, as the letter itself was rather cryptic, so it did help to have a few discussions. But before we deep dive into any speculation, let's just quickly read over the transcribed letter. Dear Yuri, while my only hope is that this finds you well, I know the hardship and peril into which I have ordered you. Forgive me for sending you far into the north, duty must come before us, and you are the only one I trust to complete this task. The boyar's dispatches grow increasingly erratic, he claims to have heard the roar. We must act quickly, and so you must go with my complete authority. Now here is where it becomes more difficult to transcribe, but there is mention of a person known as Yuri, an Ongol prince. So now we're aware of Yuri's status. It speculates that Yuri's orders are to travel to an outpost known as Devengard, a Kizavite outpost further up north. Lastly, there is mention of the need to face mortal and demon. There is some talk about it mentioning a demon in person, but I've not been able to see it myself, and neither have the other content creators that I've been speaking to. A lot of the final parts of the letter itself are very hard to transcribe or even see clearly, so there's not too much that we can go into. Lastly, we are aware that the letter itself is addressed from the Tsarina herself. So what we learn is that Yuri is a person of importance in Kislev. There are not many characters with the name Yuri, I believe there's only three or four to be in fact. Yet only one character has ever been named Yuri which is also from Kislev. I'm of course talking about Yuri Kovalenko, a character which was introduced into the fantasy universe through the second edition roleplay of Warhammer Fantasy. His only appearance, as far as I'm aware at the very least, is through the career compendium book, and there's not a lot of lore so let's just read over it just so we can get a better understanding of said character. Yuri Kovalenko Yuri has seen more than his share of excitement and adventures. A steppe nomad of the Ongol who went on to serve as a horse archer in the armies of the Tsarina. Yuri has lived through interesting times. He fought against the Great Storm of Chaos. He was at Mazhorod when Boyerin Kirkosk defeated an army of Chaos. Now he has had enough of war and adventures and simply wants to be left alone with his horses. He breeds some of the finest Kislevite war horses in the land, and is proud of his stock. The name Kovalenko holds a great deal of prestige in certain circles, but such fame means little to this proud horsemaster. Yuri cannot escape his past. On the battlefields of Mazhorod, just before victory was won, a dying Chaos Champion stumbled towards Yuri. The Ungol put his final arrow into the Fiend's gut and laid the warped Half-Man low. The Champion grasped in his hand a sparkling red jewel that seemed to burn with its own inner fire. Yuri pocketed the treasure and told no one. Since then he has grown darker in his moods and more and more isolated from his fellow men. There is a reason for this. Yuri has gained his first chaos mutation thanks to exposure to the arcane influence of the jewel, a clawed hand. Yuri can feel himself changing and knows it is only a matter of time before he transforms fully into a beast, 
and goes hunting for man flesh. He only hopes that by living far away and alone, he can keep his shame secret. So there are a few things to discuss regarding this matter. Yuri Kovalenko could indeed be the uncle that the Tsarina was referring to. Now you may be asking why is this if this man is now isolated and suffering from mutations? Well, simply because the Storm of Chaos is no longer canon in law. The Storm of Chaos was Games Workshop's first attempt at a end time scenario, but it eventually got retconned as it was just not doing as intended. Meaning that the events of the Storm of Chaos, such as Yuri fighting this Chaos Champion and eventually attaining this Red Jewel, would not be canon anymore. It's important to note that the Storm of Chaos was implemented around 6th edition, whereas Creative Assembly have indeed stated that their main focus is the timeline of 8th, so the Storm of Chaos is not considered canon in 8th edition. Instead, we had our own end time scenario, which was called the End Times. While the Storm of Chaos has not been considered canon for a long time now, we have seen the implementation of stuff around that timeline into Total War Warhammer. The way that Clan Eshin has been introduced into the game series is a perfect example of this. So it's very much possible that this Yuri is the intended recipient of that letter. And if this is the case, it would work rather well. You see, not a lot of Kislevite characters were ever introduced into lore, and even less so had more than a few lines of lore in fact. The grand majority of them introduced were actually Gospodars, which is one of two different cultures found within Kislev. The other is of course the Ongols, that were never really too explored upon. They themselves don't really see the Tsarina as their true queen. They would in fact prefer to be ruled over by another Ongol, which is perfectly understandable. You want someone of your own culture in charge in most cases. As that of course means that that person is someone that you can relate to on a cultural level. Whether or not he's been changed in lore to be something of an ongoing prince is beyond me. We'll obviously have to wait for Creative Assembly to start dropping more information. However, that could entirely be possible. As we have seen some changes to the lore over the years that Total War Warhammer has been active. We have to take into account that Repance herself should be long dead, yet is alive in this point in the game. The implementation of an Ongol character is not completely out of the question. You see, of course, Games Workshop is rewriting how Kislev was in lore for the implementation of Kislev in Warhammer the Old World. So it could be that Kislev in Total War Warhammer could have some sort of two races in a parallel, and they would need two legendary lords of different races to be able to do so. The Tsarina could have a Gospodar focus, and then Prince Yuri could have a Ongol focus. You'd still be able to recruit from both regardless of who you play, but you would get more bonuses to that of your own specific culture. So if this is indeed the case, we could see Yuri implemented as a legendary lord for Kislev as an Ongol prince. Due to the fact that the Storm of Chaos has also been retconned, it could be that he would not be suffering from any mutations. Obviously, this is pure speculation, however, it does make a lot of sense to me. This is the perfect way to show off what we are to expect from Warhammer the Old World 2 for Games Workshop. Of course, I've seen some speculation online and spoken to some of my subscribers regarding the possibility of Bellacor being the Red Jewel. This has been a common link which I've seen floating about in different places. However, it's something which I don't believe is possible. You see, the Red Jewel itself could be linked to something else. And yes, I understand that Bellacor himself was eventually placed into a jewel. Trapped, more like it, but you know what I mean. However, that was during the end times, and we are not in an end time situation as far as I'm aware. Creative Assembly themselves have repeatedly stated that we are in a 8th edition situation, not End Times and not Age of Sigmar. And should it be the case that that Red Jewel is indeed housing Bellacor, then we would kiss our chances of seeing this character implemented as a playable legendary lord goodbye, and I doubt that Games Workshop or Creative Assembly would want that, 
Bellacor is a massive name in lore and would be a big reason as to why a group of players may end up buying the game. He is so well known that even 40k fans would probably jump into Total War Warhammer without a second thought. We also have to take into account that while Total War Warhammer does have some sort of narrative, it's always very thin and loose. At the end of the day, it's another Total War game, it's mostly sandbox, and there's good reason, that's what Total War was built on. If too much story is added in, well then it's not really a Total War game anymore, is it? The Total War series has always been about building up an empire, destroying your enemies' empires, and battles, that's pretty much it. I still stand by my theory that Yuri is the second legendary lord for Kislev, it's just something which seems very obvious as a hint. Time and time again, Creative Assembly have gone back to earlier editions, and there have been some slight dips into the early RPG series, so this is entirely possible, at least in my opinion. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games, where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.